couldn't get it out of my mind. I had to touch one. I had to know what is that like to be attached to that thing. Why do we fish for bluefin tuna? Because it's the biggest, baddest fish in the ocean. Once you do it once, you're addicted. Big ones all over the place, though. They're just eating machines, man. That's what they're designed for, and they will go and do whatever they want, whenever they want. There's one sound that we all, as bluefin tuna fishermen, just strive to hear, and that's drag. Let's go! Come on! They will break your heart, they will break your soul, they will break your back, they'll break your gear. You know, it's something that it runs through your veins, but it's an emotional roller coaster, bluefin tuna fishing. Fish is on top, he's right there. Bluefin tuna was a big part of the development of IGFA. Our founder, Michael Lerner, loved to fish for bluefin tuna. So did the subsequent presidents after him. In the early years of IGFA and leadership um, that was there, tuna was really the species that, that they wanted to go after. This fish really just has a strong history in recreational angling, whether you look at California, the east coast of the United States, the Mediterranean. I mean, some of the oldest commercial fisheries actually um, documented are some of the pound net fisheries in the, in the Mediterranean. These go back centuries, centuries people that have been fishing for bluefin tuna. So if you look at it all the way from early on, people trying to fish for them for sustenance and food in the Mediterranean to what probably started in California with recreational fishing, this fish has got a long and storied history with, uh, with fishing in general. Yeah, bluefin has totally changed our fishery over the last five or six years. You know, we have a bite now with the size of fish that has not been seen in 100 years. Literally no one alive has caught this size of fish in our waters consistently, right? Last time it happened was like 1908 to like 1918, something like that. Zane Gray, the Tuna Club, the invention of kites, all of that stuff came, came to light then. And now here we are, 100 years later, same techniques, same fish, same bait, same everything, just with newer gear. It really is a special fishery. Man, 100 years ago, they were catching these things by suspending a rigged flying fish under a kite. Maybe we should try that. And the whole game just changed. And that was about three years ago into the five-year cycle. We figured out that the dead flying fish would out, outfish a yummy flyer. We could also make drifts with it and the boat didn't have to be moving and use other baits. The kites just completely changed the game and I don't know of anywhere else in the world where they really kite fish the way we do here in Southern California. Oh, that's sick! So after the catch, as you might imagine, there's a lot of fish to deal with. Again, fortunately, we have a fish processor. A lot of bluefin. Everybody's catching bluefin. It's almost limit style fishing for every boat. Every boat in the fleet is running. So this is the best fishing that we've ever had probably this time of year with the most amount of boats running. And processing is a, it's not getting less popular. More and more people want it. People want to come off their boat and have a product like this or you know like this rather than you know a trash bag full of fillets with water in it it's just not the same so the local business is building every year and that's it that's five star <laughs> in a nutshell You know, this is bigger fish than we're used to. On the tackle side of things, how it's changed is that what we're commonly fish out here in years past is fish that are 25 to 50 
pounds. That's our average tuna size here in Southern California. You know, a lot of gear has had to change for guys. You know, it requires bigger fish tackle. But when you're hooking fish that are in excess of 100 pounds on relatively light tackle, everything needs to be right. Two speeds, good drags, good leaders, everything. So it's required everybody to step their game up a little bit. And the theory is that the fish that we're catching are here from a juvenile state up until a couple of hundred pounds. What's been fun is the number of that real big fish is increasing every year. We used to never see fish two and three and now even 400 pounds and it's starting to become a lot more commonplace. To be able to take people out and show them the experience and the joy that I have from the ocean means the world to me. Now, and we can legitly leave the harbor every day and target big game fish. And that really got our clients stoked. That, that drove a lot of business into our tackle shops, into all the marine stores. People, I mean, trickling down to buying boats. Like, this is really exciting, and this will make history in Southern California. All right, ready? One, two, three, say flying fish. Flying fish. Flying fish. <laughs> You know, the interesting thing about bluefin tuna is it really wasn't highly esteemed as table fare until I think the 70s when the sushi market really caught on in Japan. You know, the market value ripped really through the roof and we've all heard stories of individual tuna that have fetched over a million dollars a piece. So um, they're a very highly uh, valuable commercial species to pursue these fish. You know, you gotta travel to certain areas to fish for them. You've gotta have boats that can take you where they need to be. And if you're fishing for giants, the biggest fish come from the Atlantic and the Western Atlantic. If you look at Ken Frazier's all half a record, um, Western Atlantic fish typically are the bigger fish. Primarily, when you talk about like fishing Cape Cod, I mean, you're talking about fishing Chatham or up by Gloucester. I mean, it's just the rich feeding grounds we have here. It's the forage, right? And they come here to spend their summer and eat, 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 eat. All you can eat buffet that is 24 seven and never stops, you know what I mean? And they're, they get here earlier than some would think and they leave a lot later than some would think. So they're here for the food. It's a different mindset to target it. I mean, it requires a lot of grit and patience. You gotta put your time in. It's, I mean, you have to really be on them and hunt them down. You know, when you're, when you're bluefin tuna fishing, you're fishing for one fish. You gotta wear the weight on your shoulders pretty, pretty heavily, looking for that one or two bites type of thing for the day. So, you know, it, as we progress through the season, you wear the stress a little differently on your plate as far as trying to produce they are, they're smart creatures for one. They, they're big for a reason. Um, you know, we've, I've caught a lot of them over the years. Um, you know, they can, they can be the most ornery things you've ever seen. And sometimes you can catch them off guard and catch them when they're stupid. They can be bruisers, they'll, they'll wreck you. They, I caught my first one when I was 15 and it changed my life from that day on. And I don't know how many I've caught since then. <laughs> You know, I mean, it's one of those things where once you do it once, you're addicted, and that's it. And your life is just messed up. I mean, look at me, kids. Be careful with the bluefin. You might end up like me. It's definitely been one of the fish that has shaped the Northeast for sure. You know, our commercial bluefin fishery here, one of the highest regulated fisheries in the whole world, um, you know, we get a pretty strict quota system, you know, it gives us about, you know, 300 tons a year and once that 300 tons is done, you know, that's it. The economic reach that bluefin tuna has commercially is vast. I mean, you're talking about international buyers over in Japan, you're talking about a domestic market that this year just looked incredible. Restaurants are opening every single day, markets in Japan are opening every single day and they all want the bluefin tuna and we're happy to give it to them. looked at to be the uh, bluefin capital of, of the world. So the guy that's eating it at the restaurant or the guy that's uh, out there on a charter, you know, it's all bringing money into the industry and uh, you know, we're lucky to have a fish like this.
Bluefin tuna is, you know, once thought to be an overfished species, but it's been a true success story. With the value of bluefin, the, the, just you have to protect them. I'm hoping we get 10 or 12 years out of it this time because not only what it's done for our fishery, but for our sport of fishing, it has created new anglers. So I think the benefits of the bluefin go far beyond our own selfish wants for catching them. It's changed our fishery and it's changed our fishery for the better and it's changed our fishing, our body of fishermen. Uh, what more could you want if you're in the fishing business and you truly care about the sport?